what I did. Now, this is crucial right here. So when you're doing this type of creative sampling, uh, these, those files stay on your hard drive. And here, you will probably never know that this, there's a menu right here. So if you want to delete that, you have to delete the recording. Or you could actually find the, the um, containing folder. So I actually got a lot of like I got a lot of files to clean up because <laughs> you know I got just 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 doing one, two, one, two. just doing just doing like random sampling, but that is a feature in machine that is definitely not discussed. Mm -hmm. So like now I would want to delete that. So now let's say, so if I go back into my scenes, uh, okay, so now I can actually set the bars up to record longer and go into my scene. So when I'm here, record, I, let's say I want like four, five, eight bars or something, right? So now, uh, so I hit start, get out of sampling. didn't set the volume loud enough, but that's me sampling that. Now, so crazy about that is I could chop that up and put any part of that on a pad. So I get slice that, and that's like any of that. It's like any part of that on the different pads right now. So Tons and tons of creativity. So then do you find when you're, because obviously it's infinite possibilities. Infinite. Do you find that you start more projects than finish? Or do you find that you well, finish a yeah, lot of well, products? Yeah, that's kind of like, well, too many flavors of ice cream. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I said this like in the last, you, you know, you got to pick a girlfriend at some point. So. <laughs> 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 can't just sit there and not, you know, you gotta pick a girlfriend at some point. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's just really fun, to, like, really, really fun to um, chop samples and find like hidden dimensions of, of of the samples that exist. Like, I love chopping hip hop samples and just finding like little small parts of the sample that you couldn't even identify <laughs> and then start. Uh, processing it so like um that those hip-hop loops you know i can't do that though i can't drag that i can't drag that so let's say like um uh, let's go into so like and then so if i want to navigate i can close out any of these views the controller because as a machine user you do want to increase your your not navigational skills where you are not using the controller at uh, well you're not using the mouse at all mm -hmm. you want to build that up definitely so in the H group in the 16th in the, okay not slide get out of sampling but in the 16th we have that open so like um that's Salt loop. So, okay. Now we got a show machine here. Uh, actually, I can just navigate. I can just navigate, actually. Uh, just disk. Um, audio files. Salt loop. Audio files. Um, 
さあさあさあでて Probably gonna need、uh, to clean, clear up. Probably gonna need to clear out a whole group to do this. Actually, reset, whole, reset two groups. Reset. So now I bring a、uh, salt loop here. Boom. Problem in machine. Why is he doing that? Because the polyphony is set to eight. So here we have to turn the polyphony down to one, so that sample it will re-trigger every time we hit.、It. Basics in machine all day. So now. Go into sampling, and I slice that. Now, if I apply the samples, now when I apply the sam samples to an entirely new group, I'm free to move the samples around wherever I want. So if I say apply to the C group, now on a new pattern, now the samples are there. So here, when we are in,、uh, here, so we'll, let's clear this out, reset. I'm the,、uh, actually one thing too. I know you were saying earlier that you、um, don't necessarily like to produce a whole track within Machine, but how often do you use? Like, do you ever bring Reactor in there? Yeah, absolutely. Or, yeah, you do. Okay, cool. And then, do you normally? I mean, will you work on synth parts and stuff within the Machine? Yeah, or is it yeah, I do. I, yeah, I'll, I'll try to develop. As much as possible,、mm -hmm. I'll try to develop a whole song、ah, in、cool. machine, but I won't try to mix it down in yeah. machine. Yeah, you know, I, I won't try to do that. I mean, you can.、Mm -hmm. I mean, you can have the scenes flowing from start to the end of the track.、Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do that. So here, that's the empty. So my、uh, group here, the C group. So now I'm in the C group. Well, these are just look at that. That is I have. So let's say I want to duplicate that to another group. So I hit duplicate that. Go to the H group or whatever pad had an empty. Can't remember now. Okay, there now should be there. This is this. We chopped the sample, and now we're moving the slices from the sample freely to any other group that we want.、And、you can duplicate plugins. You can duplicate entire plugins from one group to the next. So,、uh, so C here, and we want to duplicate that. And then, from his question, adding to a template, you could then just add these chopped samples. To any template right, that you want, right? Right. right. Yeah, yeah. So that's in the C group. Okay, sixteen. Okay, right. Because okay, I didn't right. C group. Now duplicate that to the D group. There it is. Now D.、Uh, get out of duplicate. Right there. C, C group. C group. So now you could、uh, literally 
put a trigger there and uh, kind of like drag that to the desktop. Boom. There you go. Free, free snare out of a hip hop sample. I would probably shape that a little more. Let's say like, so now I would, again, the maximizer. Beef, beef it up. I would actually um, go into here and uh, do a little envelope control. I would actually then in my third slot throw on um, beat delay or something. So here's the delay on. Feed, turn up the feed. And most importantly, um, I would tune it. So how would that sound with something? Hip hop snare, you know, completely functional and usable. So sound is everywhere. Sound is everywhere. Pitching that. So uh, let's see what else we got. another slice from that. find you like to play them in more than just like you know, drawing them in. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I never no. Yeah, you like to actually yeah, play. I like that human feel, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, hip hop sound. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, that's one thing that Ableton taught me is that production is no more than a matter of interesting frequencies and different frequency ranges. That's all production is. Mm -hmm. Like you could literally take like Christina Aguilera records and find interesting harmonics in it. it won't sound like it when it's you know won't sound like that after you're done so mm -hmm. open your mind just for, you know just even you know listen to a lot of music you don't even like you know just start listening to a lot of music yeah and just start it because that's usually where like you know something original takes place because I mean, a tribe called Quest only sampled records that, like, everybody else knew. They sampled everything. Mm -hmm. They sampled blues. They sampled western. They sampled, like, got, they sampled, like, uh, orchestral stuff. They sampled mm -hmm. everything. They yeah. went, they actually, like, even turned their audience on to, like, a lot of producers and genres that, that you know, the tribe called Quest listeners never even knew nothing, nothing about, like, Lou Reed mm -hmm. or, like, um... Oh, I can't even think of some of that, like Lou Reed and uh, Bob Dylan. Mm -hmm. You know, they actually turned hip hop producers on to like all these artists and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Because you know, other people were looking for samples and you know, just or just even for their original compositions. Mm -hmm. So, so then I guess I have to ask, and I don't know if we're jumping ahead here or not, but let's say you come across a beat like that, and you just start using Reactor. How do you turn something right, like that? Right. Ah, there we go. So now let's get into that. Okay. If that's okay with everyone, if ever, okay, cool. Right. So, okay. So now, so the question is, how is this turn? Turn. How is this loop? turn into this? That's the question. Let's 
So now let's let's get to it. Okay. So um that's in this session right here. All right, now, uh, machine is as functioning as a plug-in in Ableton, but reactor is functioning as a plug-in in machine while, <laughs> while. Through Ableton. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So now, this will blow your mind. So here, it's, all, it's, it's a granular synthesis method. Uh, so here we have, okay, navigate, close, close out some of these views so I can see everything that's going on here. So here's machine, and this is that sample, okay, make sure that the, machine is armed to receive the signal in okay so okay turn it on now okay so now not yet not this one okay right now here should be this instance of a machine which is here So now we turn the volume up and let's see. So we and I have all of the parameters here mapped out to machine actually. So the volume and the position. And why am I not hearing anything? Do you ever press play on Ableton? No, we will, we will get to that. We will get okay. to this. Okay, so maybe. Okay, there's the audio from the machine. Okay. Okay, let's see. Audio to master. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate this and I'll demonstrate this in standalone if I don't get this. We are getting a signal. Why am I not? Okay. Let's see what. Ah, uh, no. Okay. There's some automation drawn on this mess. Okay, so there we go. There we go. We okay. Delete. Turn to default. Nah. Should be able to get this now. Machine. From this instance. There we go. Nah. Cool. Okay. So this is that hip hop sample. Now we are we essentially are scrolling through the waveform in milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And when when you do that, that's where harmonics take place because you can no longer identify a necessarily element of the sample because it's so small, it's on the granular level. So now, actually, I'm gonna, I have an effect here, so I'm gonna take that off. So now, here, I can scroll through this waveform. Tone that.
to that mm -hmm. on the granular level. I'm getting some pitch bend. And that's just one position. That's just one position in the sample. Mm -hmm. So, uh, So there we have it. Let's take that position in the sample. And I can set this to as many voices of polyphony as mm -hmm. I want. It's not really restricted. It's like I set this to eight voices of polyphony. something pertaining to this controller. So now let's say I want to tune this. Right? Now, go on an effect and machine frequency shift. From a hip hop, yeah. yeah. So, create a beat. Let's see what we got here. This doesn't go too crazy. Uh. Does everyone see how we got there by yeah. essentially running it through reactor to to get that sound? Does everyone get that? Working on the granular. On the granular, yep. Yep. on the granular level, yep. all harmonics or identification within the file is is no longer relevant. Yep. So, Go ahead. did you have a question? No. Uh, well, no. See, this is a device I learned, built, and I, you know, sorry to say, but you know, this is what that's the bad side of it, but that's the beauty of it. You know, like Reactor is a dentist appointment. You make that dentist appointment, you won't be back for a while. <laughs> you, you know, that's a good way. That's a good way to sell that tool. <laughs> of this uh, preset inside of uh, yeah. What's that? What's the name of that preset? Okay, so, no, it's not a preset. This oh, is something okay. I built. This is, you know, and that's why there's so many hidden methods of synthesis that just need to be unearthed. Mm -hmm. You know, you go to like the ocean and and you know Australian. You know, all these unclassified species, you know, this is it's the same thing. Wait, you mean you built the, I built the, the this. I, no, I built program, this instrument. I built this right. instrument. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's gonna get it's gonna get even you're gonna see something else in a minute. So so here, then, here then I quick. start then I start um programming a chord change. So uh pattern double. So then just anything. Okay, record. All that stuff. Come on. I need, I need, uh, I need, uh, actually, I need um, another, I need to increase the length. Mm -hmm. Pattern, double again. So like in, uh, now I like to see you can, you know, you won't see it in position, so you can scroll here. 
Let's see where you're actually at. Further into the methods of synthesizing this. I got a decent chord progression going right. So then, this is where I, I scroll to a different position in the sample to see if it could be relevant to that chord progression. And then when you're working, do you use multiple points within the one sample throughout can, the track? I can, yeah. I can, I can. So like, let's say that's cool. Then I see. Uh, sound a little low. Uh, maximize. You know, playing parts over it, man. From a hip hop sound. <laughs> yeah. Can't stress that yeah. enough. You know? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, like you know, as producers, we're looking in the, we're looking in the, we're looking in the same places where everybody looks. Mm -hmm. And I can't say it enough. That's what made Tribe Called Quest. Tribe Called Quest. Mm -hmm. They looked outside of the box. Mm -hmm. It was like people were like, man, Lou Reed, what? Yeah. But you liked it when you liked it when they when they put that track together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people would you know hip hop heads would never listen to like Lou Reed and uh, you know uh, Janis Joplin or somebody. Like the average hip hop head would not. But when they put that together and put that grimy kid on top of that, it was it was a different story then. Mm -hmm. Did anyone have any questions on that? portion of it at all? Did you have a question back there? Um, I want to see if I can see the back of the sequencer that he used, that he made. Uh, he was asking if he could see the back of the tool that he well, built. I'll, um, well, I'll <laughs> tell you, uh, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you um, uh, something about that. It's the sampler lookup module. Now with that, the next time I see you, you should be showing me something. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, that's a big giveaway right there. You've got six months. Well, Go. I, I, I'm not giving away my crown, crown, crown. No, I can't do that. What about that. if you take the, the main sample from the hip hop thing and uh, you want to stretch it, stretch it, right? How do you do that without chopping in all the pads? So you mean... Um, He's asking if, if you take the hip hop sample, how would you stretch it without having to chop it up? So. How would I stretch it? Time stretch it? Time yeah, stretch it? Time yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay. Now, actually, one, one, before we move on, before we move on, I want to show you, because uh, there's another company called Twisted Tools that makes this project, <laughs> I mean, that makes this, uh, uh, makes reactor ensembles, and it's called Vortex. Uh, it's pretty sick, actually. So, like, uh, navigate, get my views all back in order. So, now here. Okay, so now. Okay. I'm probably going to have to get off of that one sequence. I'm going to delete that because that's no more, no longer relevant. So, 
That's the original, right? Now, here is another instance of a reactor which contains uh, that sample in this device called Vortex by Twisted Tubes. So, So salt add. This. Same hip hop loop. So so basically. So Vortex can allow you, you put, you can load in six different samples in Vortex and, you know, sequence different positions of each sample. So then like you have this like cinematic orchestra of samples with different start times and positions interacting with other samples with different start times and positions. So like here, when we play this. Let's see. Time stretch it. Turn this up a little bit. Oh, here. So you can create a completely different variation of a loop from that. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we can pitch it. Change the length or the start position. Is this something you commonly use when you're sitting down and? And that's how saying? I created that. That's how I created that kick from that. So here, I look. Oh, here. That's how I created a kick from that. Yeah. Just change the start position and put the notes where a kick would fall on the yeah. grid. So you experiment with the length a little more. Mm -hmm. Pitch it. No, you have to. This is you have to buy, but this is. I did a lot of remixes using this. You could literally throw any six samples in there and just come up with something. So now I'll change the start position. I can chug your beat. Anyone have any questions, concerns, anything on on any of the stuff that we've seen? In Ableton. In Ableton. So as far as time stretching goes, in Ableton. Okay. You yeah. normally like so to do like that. Less, uh, 
Oh, I got it. I got it here. Yeah, I got a nice. Uh, I figured out how to get that classic like raga dubstep time stretching. Actually, I got a sample. A dub. Dubs. So here, this is just me saying dub spot. So let's take a look. That's, that color is a little too dark for me. <laughs> so dubs, I'm just saying dub spot right here. Dub spot. So um, I warp that, loop it. I'm just saying dub, dub spot, dub spot, dub spot, dub spot. Now, so I want to make this uh, four bars long. So here I can just turn that to four bars. Now this sample is four bars long. Dub spot. Dub spot. Oh, just all you got to do. Ah. Dub spot. It's about to get. Dub. Okay. I'm actually going to Dub. take this off. We're gonna see where I want this to fall. Dub spot. Dub spot. Okay, this. Dub spot. Well, as far as it'll go. Dub spot. I'll probably change this to something like complex. Dub spot. There we go. Dub spot. Dub. Dub. There we go. And this is how that classic. Spot. <laughs> Spot. Spot. Uh, turn the grid off. Alright, like. Ah. There we go. There we go, all the way. Yeah. Now raise that. Don't raise it. Yeah. Now, let's make it a little more interesting. Here, uh, ping pong. Ping pong delay. Yeah. All right, so we have a couple minutes here. Sorry to cut the time stretching down. I'm sure we could have fun with that one vocal for the rest of the night. Um, any last questions? Anything you want to ask my couple? Yeah. Um, you had asked him earlier um, which one did he mainly use as his composition. So you never answered the question. So okay. You inspiration and everything. So Ableton, yeah. Ableton Reactor Machine. No, I'm saying, do you ever use like a machine that like Standalone yes, absolutely. B cranking out beats, yeah, absolutely. Like, the, like when he uh, spoke about mixing in the box, he's like, your face, man, just looks like way crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, well, <laughs> you can do it. You will need some really uh, good plugins. I recommend Isotope by Ozone. Um, frequencies can be muddy in the digital domain. They can be muddy. Um, and if you don't know that, try using the ozone and your face will go like. <laughs> You'll get that same look on your but, face. You're like, um, the you know, it's not necessarily meant to eliminate hardware or eliminate each other. I mean, the best combination is best. But if you want that fat killer sound, I'm a, I am a fan of using hardware with this production and my, my tools here. With I'm, that sound, I am yeah. a, I am a I'm an avid fan of starting here, taking advantages of the effects that don't exist in hardware, the time stretching methods that don't exist in hardware, because some, you know, a lot of these functions and features don't exist in hardware. So I like to take the finished ideas and mix them down through an analog desk. 
if you you know if you want that if you want it, you have you have the right to dispute that and <laughs> stand by the claims of your own work me methods. But a lot of people in the industry do swear by that method. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, you can Ferry Corsten or something can tell you that he only uses Wave plugins and UAD plugins and. Uh, you know, fifteen thousand dollar bundle suites of plugins. Yeah. So, yeah. to each his own. But that's, I mean, I'm kind of old school. When yeah. It's on. Yeah. I put out records, and I'm 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 doing vinyl mastering, and I'm doing like, I mean, now, now see, because now for digital producers who are uh, seeking out uh, uh, contracts with Bport, then th that's not necessarily needed. Because you can you can get a file super louder than than a than a vinyl than a cut for vinyl because you can push more frequencies through a file, and that's why in a club that digital sometimes does sound louder than vinyl because you can vinyl can only um, contain a, a, a finite amount of of, of frequencies mm -hmm. that can be cut to vinyl. Digital you can push a whole lot more frequency range through it. To get a much much louder sound, mm -hmm. so it all. So if you are digital, then then you you may not need hardware. You may not. You well, will just need a oh, great sorry. mastering guy, <laughs> which hopefully we can produce here. So um, I was just gonna say uh, we we do have to cut it here at this point. Uh, I just wanted to say on behalf of Dubspot. Thank you again for, for coming out tonight. Thank you to all of you who are, are watching from around the world. Uh, be sure to tune in. We do have uh, tutorial videos coming up with Mike. Keep checking out uh, the blog. Uh, a lot of the stuff that he covered here in this presentation, we do have classes for. We have sound design classes, machine classes, Ableton classes, mixing and mastering classes. So be sure to please check that out. Uh, once again, my name is Hart. Uh, and on behalf of DubSpot, thank you. And let's give another round of applause for Mike Huckabee. Oh, thank you, sir. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> woo! Uh, and that's that. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I'm like, I'm